In this video, I'm going to share some tips and tricks when applying Rubio Monaco to your furniture. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Jason with Ben's Woodworking. I do bi-weekly videos with tips and tricks on woodworking all in an effort to make you a better woodworker. So if you're new to my channel, consider subscribing. In today's video, I want to talk about Rubio Monaco. If you've been following along with me on Instagram, you know that I just finished up a walnut dining room table and the finish that I decided to use for the dining room table is Rubio Monaco Pure. Due to the fact that the entire finish process really sparked a lot of interest and I got a lot of requests, to make a video and I also got a ton of questions on how I went about applying it, I decided I wanted to go ahead and jump on here and make a video and walk you through the steps just so you can see how easy it is and see how beautiful the finish comes out. In June, I had the privilege of being invited to Rubio Monocote USA in Austin, Texas for a fabulous training event and there we got a little bit more hands-on with the product itself. In addition, my friend Alan Neary, who you'll see here in this video clip, actually came over to my house to collaborate with me and apply the finish to the table together. This was really beneficial because I actually learned so much just in the short amount of time that he was here and actually learned some of the things that I've been doing wrong in the past. So based off the process that I went through for the table and some helpful tips that he gave me, I wanna share that information with all of you so you guys can start using this product and use it right. As with most of my videos, I'll go ahead and start by kind of walking you through each one of the products that you're gonna see in the video. Like always, I will leave affiliate links down below in the description, as well as a link to Rubio Monocote's website. So if you wanna go get more information or purchase any of these products for yourself, that's where you can find the links. The finish that I chose for my table, and pretty much any time I use Walnut, is the Rubio Monocote Oil Plus 2C, and the color is the color Pure. This is their raw wood cleaner, and it's used to clear off all the dust or debris from the wood prior to you putting your finish on it. To wipe the excess down, I like to use these terry cloth towels, which you can purchase at just about any home store in a huge bundle for fairly inexpensive. I'm gonna show you two different ways to apply it. I'm gonna show you the traditional way that you usually see most on social media, and that's using one of these spreaders. This is one by a company named System 3, and you can buy them in variety packs. And on the other half, I'm gonna show you the technique that we use for my table, which is one of these white applicator pads. When I demonstrate using the application pad itself, I will be using one of these uh, application pad blocks for that process. And then I'm gonna take you a little bit further and show you another process that raised the most questions, and I'll explain it more when I get there, but that's adding a second coat. And in this video, I'm gonna actually walk you through those steps that I took to do that in the event that you ever find a situation where you need to do it as well. And the only additional tool that you're gonna need for that application process is one of these maroon pads. In the video, I will be demonstrating with a piece that I cut off. However, the maroon pad is just from the flooring industry, and this is the maroon pad that you can buy at any home store, and you can buy this, and it's about the equivalent to a 320 grit piece of sandpaper. And I'll walk you through the steps again once we get there, but all you have to do is just cut this into small pieces, and you can use that to abrade the surface before putting on that second coat should you need to. So the next topic that has sparked the most conversation is when it comes to what grit do you sand to? Rubio themselves recommend not going any higher than 120 grit. You can go to 150 grit as long as you raise the grain before application, and you'll also hear this referred to as water popping. Okay, so I'm gonna have you in fairly close for the remainder of this video, just so you can really kind of see what I'm doing. What I have here in front of me is a scrap piece of walnut that I couldn't use on my previous project. It's got a few knots and voids that I'm just not a big fan of. So I'm gonna use this to apply the Rubio 2. Now, I've gone ahead and sanded this surface up to 150 grit. Since I have it sanded to 150, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my water and I'm simply going to spray down my piece and this is what's called water popping or what's traditionally known as raising the grain. To go back on something that I mentioned earlier, Rubio mentions that 120 is the highest that they recommend. Should you go to 120, water popping or raising the grain isn't necessarily needed. But when you go to 150 and you're closing off those pores a little bit more, raising the grain is what's opening up those pores. The reason you don't go to as high of a sand and grit with Rubio is because the product itself molecularly bonds to the wood fibers. 
So the higher you go in grit, the more you close off those pores and the more difficult you're making it to bond with those fibers. With that being said, if you choose to go to a higher grit yourself, you absolutely 100% need to make sure that you open that grain back up before you apply the product to ensure that it gets a good bond. Now my piece is dry and if I run my hand over the top, you can definitely feel that it's opened up the pores quite a bit. The next step is I'm gonna go ahead and use the raw wood cleaner to ensure that I get all of the dust and any debris that was left behind off. To apply that, you can use a terry cloth rag. Uh, I, like to, I just have some white t-shirts that I have cut up laying around and I'm gonna go ahead and apply some of that raw wood cleaner directly to it and then I'm just going to give a little bit of pressure and make sure that I'm really rubbing it in, trying to get it as clean as I possibly can. Really getting all the dust that was left behind out of the wood itself. And then checking my piece, and as you can see there, it took off quite a bit. The great thing about this cleaner is it dries very quickly, much like mineral spirits. While I'm letting that dry, I'm gonna go ahead and show you exactly how you go about mixing this, so that way as soon as that piece of wood is dry, we can start the application process. As I showed you before, it does come in two parts. So on the bottom, you have the accelerator, and on the top, you have the Rubio itself. The kit itself is 350 milliliters. The finish itself is 275 milliliters, and the accelerator is 75 milliliters. The mix ratio for the two is three parts finish, one part accelerator. I didn't mention earlier, but something that my friend Keith from KJ Sawdust on Instagram told me is that he likes to use syringes. Right here, it has the milliliter measurements, so it makes it very, very easy to know exactly how much you're pulling out. I unfortunately made the mistake of buying these in 60 milliliters, which is far too big for most applications. So next time I order them, I will definitely be getting the smaller ones. However, it still accomplishes the same task. So we'll go ahead and get these opened up. Something I do wanna point out is to make sure that you don't damage the seals on these, especially with the activator. And the reason is, is because if you don't get a good seal when you put it back together, like just about any finish, this can become useless pretty quickly. Now, me personally, I like to mix my product in just one of these solo cups. Works really well, very easy to pour, and it's just a good container to use overall for most applications. Now, I do not need a lot for this demonstration because the Rubio Monocoat goes a very long way. It takes a little bit of time to figure out exactly how much you need, but the great thing is, is if you run out, you can just mix a little bit more. For this, I'm not gonna take any more than 10 milliliters nine to 10 milliliters of this. So I'll take right around three milliliters of the accelerator. Again, three parts to one part. So I put my syringe in, I pull out some of the product, and I'm gonna go all the way up. We'll just stop at nine. Now all I have to do is take that and apply that directly into my cup. Now I'll go ahead and get my three to four milliliters. I do recommend using a different syringe for each one of them, just so you're not mixing. However, unfortunately, this is my last syringe, so I like to live dangerously. So I'm gonna show you guys with the one. Again, make sure once you are done with the activating agent, you really make sure that you apply ample amount of pressure and make sure that this is sealed nice and tight. And then you can stack the two back together and store it for the next time. To mix my product, all I'm going to do is just use one of these stirring sticks, and I'm just mixing it to make sure that the activating agent itself is, or the accelerator, excuse me, is mixing with the finish itself. As I stated earlier, I'm gonna show you two different application techniques. I'm gonna show you using a spreader to spread it on one side, and then I'm gonna use the pad that you see here on the opposite side. So when using the spreader, it's very, very simple. I'm just gonna pour some on, don't need a lot, and I'm gonna use that small amount, and then I'm gonna use the spreader to spread that product out, just like you see here. Now, the reason why Rubio takes so little to cover a small area is because I can rub this over the same spot over and over again, and it's not gonna to continue to bond because it's already covered that area. This is the way that I've always applied Rubio until my buddy Alan came over to my shop and showed me a different technique 
And I actually find the other technique, while it is more work, I believe, I believe it produces really, really nice results. And it is actually much easier to get the sides. And let me talk about that for a second. So if I'm using the spreader and I have to get vertical sides, it's not as easy as just taking the spreader and running it down the side. At some point, you're gonna use a rag or one of these to get the vertical surfaces. So I actually prefer just starting with this and using this on every piece. Now we'll let that sit for a couple of minutes and I'm gonna show you the other technique. Now, so I don't waste an entire pad and only use a corner of it for this small section. What I like to do is go ahead and cut these down into smaller pieces, which is also really, really beneficial when you are doing the vertical pieces and it also allows to get in the corners very easily. Now, it's not the full size of the pad itself. However, it's essentially just a hook and loop system. You put it on the block itself and now it's good to go. So now I'm gonna do the same thing and apply my finish. And this, all I'm going to do is I'm basically buffing it in as I apply it. You don't necessarily have to make circular motions. You're simply spreading it over the surface, getting a nice even coat all over everything. And as you can see here, I just went over the area that I already did and there is no color mismatch. It just blends in real nice. I wanna make sure that I get a nice, good even coat. And once that's on there, I'm gonna let this sit for a few minutes and I'm gonna go ahead and wipe the whole thing off with the terry cloth towel. Okay, so this has been sitting for about three to five minutes. You don't wanna let it sit any longer than 15 minutes. That's about your working time. So with that being said, I recommend, let's say you were doing a table and it had legs. What we did is we did the four legs first, went back, wiped them down, then did the apron itself. Now all I need to do is take my terry cloth towel and I wanna make sure that I remove all the excess material. And as it starts to build up, if you need to, you can just fold your towel, wipe off any other excess, and just like that, your finish is done. So as you can see here, the finish that it leaves is just this beautiful satin luster that really just keeps the originality of the wood. Now, I did say that this is done. It does not have to have another coat put on. However, I wanna point something out. I can already see it now with this wood specifically. As I mentioned earlier in the video, while it is not necessary in terms of protection to put a second coat on, in a scenario like walnut or say pine that may absorb that oil a little bit heavier in some spots, and I'm gonna show you some of those spots. One of those spots is right here. It's much lighter in color. One of those spots is right here, and they tend to be around the knot areas. Now, the reason that happened is because those areas absorbed the oil a little bit quicker and deeper than some of the other areas. So to remedy that, I'm going to apply a second coat for the purposes of this video and show you the process to do that if you ever find that you need to. So I'm gonna let this sit for 24 hours. I'll come back out tomorrow. I'll walk you through the steps on how to apply that second coat, and then we will be done. Okay, everybody, so it has been 24 hours uh, I've let my piece that you can sit right back there dry ever since last night filming the first part. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you the process that you would take if you were going to do a second coat for the reasons I already mentioned. Okay, so just to touch on it real quick again, the thing that I'm using is one of these maroon floor pads. And as I stated in the beginning of the video, you can buy these at any home store. Uh, it's nothing special. It's just a maroon flooring pad. I've taken a piece and cut it off. And that's what I'll be using to abrade this piece here and it's really quite simple it's just like sanding anything else i'm not pushing really hard i'm just applying slight pressure and moving back and forth with the grain in order to make sure i get a nice smooth even finish on the top of the board before i apply it i'm just going to take a rag and wipe it down i'm not using the cleaner or anything like that simply just wiping off any of the light dust that was created. You can use the block to apply the pressure again. I'm just gonna take this piece that I have here and I'm just going to work it in, just moving with the grain, nice even coat. And again, this is only to assist with evening out any spots that may have absorbed a little bit more finish. And when I did my recent dining table build, there was definitely some areas uh, that could have required a little bit of extra attention and I could not have been happier 
uh, with the second application and how it really just smoothed everything out. So I'll let that sit for a couple of minutes and wipe off the excess and we will be done. And I can already tell that the couple areas that I showed last night that were a little bit lighter have really, really evened out. Not bad for a piece of scrap wood. One thing that is important that I do want to highlight, and I did not know this personally when using this product because, of course, I mean, who reads the can? But right on the top, they have a sticker, and it talks about how uh, the product is combustible, can be combustible. And so he advised me to take my rags and my sponges and take them outside, dip them in water, uh, and let them dry out before disposing of them, or just taking a garden hose, spraying them down, getting them wet, and then letting them dry out, and then dispose of them. So that's useful information for everybody to know, and it's something that I've started doing and will continue to do moving forward. For the most part, I feel like this video will pretty much answer all of those questions that I received. And as you can see in the video, it's extremely easy finish to apply. And I just really love it because not only does it smell fantastic, but it really makes the wood just look great in its natural form. As always, everybody, if you have any other questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And if you're not following me on Instagram, head over there and check me out at Ben's Woodworking. You'll get to see what I'm doing on a daily basis and feel free to send me a DM with any of the questions that you might have. So until the next video, get in the shop, try something new, and I'll see you then.